I'm glad that this next person is on earth. He's one of the most passive aggressive, sarcastic people I think I've ever seen in my life. And when I first started watching his videos, you didn't know whether or not he was serious at first. And then it like started the realization creeped up on you that I think he thinks like us. I think because he, he was just so consistent and never broke anything. I mean, he was just just very in character and, and it was it's good stuff. But J.P. Sears uh, has a brilliant 11,000 videos uh, online where he is a one man in living color show. And he hits everything. I loved, actually, I was just watching one of his videos where he was talking about if the alphabet people took over government. And I could not stop watching the hand of the purple haired person that he was being because it was a kitten puppet as a glove. And I just get, I couldn't get past it. But he's got a book out. And I have it here, actually. Let me, we, we, it's a prop, too. Uh, chomp, 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 the Snapfast Challenge. And it's with Brave Books. And JP joins us now via Skype, also from the Great Republic of Texas. JP, good to, it's good to meet you, finally. Welcome. Dana, thank you for having me on. It's great to meet you. Of course. So I, first off, I have to ask you, because you, you have your background in comedy, and I like your approach to these issues because nothing that I, I feel like the way that you approach it, nothing could ever actually be construed as being malicious to people. It's just hysterical. Uh, tell me about like, did you I don't think you ever really always did? I don't know if it's maybe a political uh, angle or a current event angle, but how did that when did that kind of kick off and you started focusing more on that? Yeah, I used to, you know, there is no politics in my comedy and I wasn't even wasn't interested in politics whatsoever. But what changed that, you know, now I like to use my comedy to stand up for freedom and freedoms weirdly become a political issue in the United States that, of yeah. America. Odd. So that started spring of 2020. You know, they they launched the whole COVID lockdown kind of thing. And first time in my lifetime, I was seeing freedoms in America be eroded away. And I, you know, I know a little bit about history. So I realized like where these patterns of freedom erosion could go if we allow it. So just following the natural instincts of my heart, I started using my comedy content as a way to stand for freedom mm. and using the sword of satire to help slice through the psychological scar tissue of the propaganda, lies, hypocrisy, and corruption to hopefully let the light of truth shine free. And most of all, hopefully get people to do a little bit more of their own thinking. Yeah. And, and I, I think you've been very successful at that. We're talking with our friend J.P. Sears, uh, who has a, a new, it's a children's book out. It's about uh, peer pressure, chomp, 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 the snap fast challenge. Right, you, you, were, you were using comedy to make that message right as comedy was, a lot of people wondered if comedy was dying because everybody is so offended. I think people f find a power in being offended over everything. So has that time passed? Has the pendulum swung? Can we be, can things be funny again? Yeah, by the way, the things, they always could have been funny. It's just a matter of do people silence themselves? Do the comedians succumb to the fear of cancel culture? And I, I, I can't say the true thing because it might offend someone. I think it's bouncing back, though, you know, we always were allowed to laugh. We, and nobody can take our right to laugh away. So it was always there. By the way, when there is a drought of comedy about what's going on in the world, people become hungrier for it. They appreciate it more. It's pretty beautiful. And you know, personally, I think it seems like we've reached the point of peak offendedness because it's gotten so ridiculous, so absurd. We have a lot of work to do, but it seems like the pendulum is swinging back. And you mentioned people get a sense of power from being offended, and that's what they've done. And we have a culture of people who have been trained to be victims and get a sense of power, but that's artificially flavored power. It's actually disempowering, but they just believe, oh, this disempowering thing I'm doing, this is empowering for me. So. I think people have, we've not only seen so many ridiculous examples of people being offended and, you know, self-victimized in culture that we see how ridiculous it is, 
but also people have tried it enough that they've had enough experience to realize it doesn't work. I don't yeah. feel empowered. I don't feel happier. I'm not living a better life because I figure out creative ways to get offended about anything. So I think we're swinging back in a, a I hope good so. direction. Because half the time I can't tell anymore if the if what I'm looking at is like a real article of news or if it's satire because everything is so dumb. Like for instance, I've got to bring this up with you because you and I are very like minded on i mean i some people might say vaccines i say clot shots i mean you know it's kind of all you know i mean one side or the other but um i it's like they feel as though i guess that the vaccine was so successful that now they're trying to figure out what else can they make vaccines for and i hands to sky it's an actual real story so in brazil and i we just talked about this in our headline segment they're developing a new vaccine jp for cocaine addiction now, I would just think that it would be to not do it. But no, 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 there's going to be a vaccine for everything now. And I feel like that's we're going to start seeing this for a multitude of, of different things. If you have something that you're doing that you should maybe correct or not do, there's a vaccine for that. I just kind of wanted to get your take on it. Man, it, I mean, it's it's part of the what I would call it's a an agenda, intentional or not. I think it's intentional to weaken people. So instead of using your self-responsibility, let's get you to rely on this product. This is the way you can be happy or healthy or accomplish what you want. You need to depend on this thing outside of yourself that comes from criminal organizations, high pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> but to your point, like one way to like, you know, overcome a cocaine addiction is to not do it. Like that's... <laughs> Easier said than done, right. but absolutely. So, and then, you know, these weight loss shots, it's like, well, you know, like also exercise and eating clean foods can do that. So to me, it this cocaine vaccine, which is hilarious, by the way, it absolutely looks like it's a predictable part of the pattern of teaching people to be weak. And the way you get people to be weak is to get them to depend on someone else which means you teach people to not use the superpower called self-responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. I want to ask you about your book, Chomp, Chomp, Chomp with Brave Books. They do such good stuff. I love the art that Brave, uh, that, that they do, the illustrations that they have. So this is JP's book, and this is all about peer pressure, which very timely considering what we all just went through as a world for like two and a half years. That was the longest 15 days ever. <laughs> That, that was actually the motivation of it. I mean, I, I, I think kids, protecting kids and nurturing kids, that's the most important job to do on the planet. And we all know peer pressure can be a force of nature for kids. And now with social media, it's even more forceful. But you look at the world the last three years, and we, I was just looking at adults and realizing they didn't get the message about peer pressure when they were a kid because they're all succumbing to it. And of course, adults succumbing to peer pressure, what we've seen, you know, we call that obedience and compliance, where people are betraying their own thinking, they're betraying their own heart, and they're exercising cowardice to conform rather than courage in order to stand for what's true to them. So Kids need these messages because we we see so much kids programming, yeah. shows, Hollywood, Disney, public schools, engineered to, what I think, weaken kids, teach them to betray their thinking, reward them for going along with the herd, and intimidate them and punish them for actually being a free-thinking individual. So... I wanted to illustrate the consequences of succumbing to peer pressure, but also with the redemption in this story, illustrate the reward of exercising courage to do your own thinking and being true to yourself. I love that. J.P. Sears, the book is Chomp, 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 The Snap Fast Challenge. And people can also find you on awakenwithjp.com. And I suggest you go and watch all of his videos because they are hysterical. You Do you have like a whole costume area? Like you have like so many wigs and props. Yeah, I, I have. My father would be ashamed of me if he came <laughs> into my prop closet. Like, J.P., what? That's a lot of women's wigs and women's <laughs> dating suits. 
So yeah, I, I, I have got too much space dedicated to that. Well, I keep doing what you're doing because it's, it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's funny. And I think we need some of that, especially with this, the, like the ridiculousness of everything today. I mean, you kind of have to bring absurdity to laugh at the absurdity. So thanks for that. JP Sears, Awaken with JP. Good to talk with you. Love to have you back. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. I'd love to. Great to see you. You too. Take care.